Hi guys, so this is going to be an intro into Estelle Cam. Estelle Cam is a simple piece of cam software designed to facilitate those sheet cuts with a CNC router system or something similar. It is by far the easiest program I have found to use uh, when conducting those types of operations. It's a little quirky and it's not perfect for everything, but as a simple starting point, it works great. It's definitely worth having in your inventory of softwares. It's fairly inexpensive. I think it's only about 60 bucks. And I'm going to show you how to navigate through it, get it set up, and start generating your first couple cuts. So the first thing we're going to do, if we've opened our Estelle Cam here, is we're going to notice that we have a blank workspace and our tool library up here. Yours is going to look a little bit different. Mine has been set up with some of the tools we use regularly, so yours might not have as many. We'll go through that in a little bit. But first thing we're going to do is go to the Setup tab here. We're going to go to Basic Settings. We have all the settings that is going to apply to our basic cuts. And this is the first thing we need to set up before we start using it. So on the right hand side here, you'll notice all the different uh, CNC program presets we have available to us. We are using Mach 3, so that's what's selected for us. But you can go through here, you can find out which one you're using, or at least which one will spit out the type of code that you need to run. In a file name that is compatible with your CNC controller, you should be fine. So we're using Mach 3 here. On the left hand side, we have some just basic settings as far as your preferred language, uh, your length of DXF import. I leave this at ask each time. When you're creating those DXF files, if you're doing it in millimeters or inches or you're flipping between the two, when you import that file, if you have this set to ask each time, it's gonna ask you what unit that you've made the file in and you'll just tell it for each individual file. If you're always working in a specific unit, you could certainly just enter that here. It won't bother asking you. Just be aware of that. When you import something different, it might not come in at the right size. Likewise for your STL import, that's for doing some of those 3 mil jobs. And here we have the length of unit that your CNC controller is going to use. So make sure that's set correctly because this is how it will interpret that data that comes in the length of unit in a Stell cam, which is going to be your operating unit when you're inside the workspace area. The feed unit for the CNC program, likewise with the length of unit, this is the feed rate that your CNC controller understands. And then the feed unit in a Stell cam, so this can be different if you prefer to operate in inches per minute as opposed to millimeters per minute. Your clearance plane, which is going to be the height that the tool starts and ends the cuts at, or the height it uses when it's traveling in between cuts. The milling direction, which is your climb or conventional milling strategies, or your z-axis origin, which can either be the top of the workpiece or your machine bed, again, depending on how you typically operate. And then your CNC program start and end, which is going to be where it starts the cut and where it ends the cut. So once you've set all that up, you're going to click OK. The next thing we're going to do is go to the view window and we're going to go to work area. So this is where we're going to set up what our work area looks like in a Cam. So when we bring in a file, a DXF file or an SDL file, it's going to apply it to that size of work table we have available to us. So it's important to get this set up right. So you can make sure that when you're laying out your parts, they're going to fit on the machine and you're going to be able to do what you want to do. So enter that in based on the size of your table and click OK. So before I import a file here, I'm going to just run through our little tool window over here. You should see this up in the corner. If not, if something happened and it's gone, you can just go to your view, the tool list or F1, and it's going to bring it back up. So here's where we're going to enter in the tools that we're using. I have more than you will have here because we use this program. But say I was entering my quarter inch end mill, I will name the tool there, and then I'll go through the various columns and set it up. So everything happens within this window. The first column is your tool diameter. Second column is the maximum step down that you're allowing it to use. The angle of entry for the cut is in this column here. And at 90 degrees, that means it's just gonna come straight down. If you want more of a ramp entry, you could set it for 45 degrees or something like that. Next, we have our feed rate in the X and Y direction. We have our feed rate for the Z direction, our spindle speed. We have an overlap here. So if you're doing some face milling on a part and you're going to be doing a lot of lateral passovers, you can set the percentage that the tool will step over in between passes. The maximum you can set is 90%, which means there's going to be a 10% overlap between those passes. And then the last column here, we just have the angle of the end of the tool. So this is pretty much just for setting up your chamfering tools. Every other tool will have 180 degrees entered as its value. 
If you have an engraving bit like we have down here, we have a 30 degree engraving bit, that number is set to 30 degrees. As it's pictured here, it's just the angle between those two cutting faces, but for everything else, it's gonna be 180 degrees. So next, I'm going to open a file and we're gonna get started with that. So I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna go open, I'm gonna to navigate to my file, I'm gonna click open, and I'm gonna get this unit request window pop up. As I said, because we have it set to ask later, every time we import a file, it's gonna ask me what the unit dimensions are. In our case, it's inch. So we're gonna leave it at inch and we're gonna click okay. And then the parts are gonna come in into our workspace. So you can see it is uh, superimposed the parts within our working area. So that's the gray line there. That's what we set up earlier. That is basically your working surface. And then our parts are plopped down in here. If you're importing a DXF, it's important to know one of the glitches that this program seems to have is if the DXF is open in another program, such as AutoCAD, you will not be able to import it. Uh, it seems to be an issue that's unique to this program. You'll have to go back to that other program, close the file, and then you'll be able to import it again and start making your cuts in Estelle Cam here. So I'm just gonna run through some of the tool options real quick. So if I've selected my tool, I'm gonna select my quarter inch end mill, and that's the tool I'm gonna use to make these cuts. You have part, hole, engraving, carve, drill, our typical kind of operations that we'll see in many CAM softwares. This one's simplified it quite a bit. So I can just click my part and I could say, this is a part, click that. And it's already generated my tool path with the appropriate offset. I'm gonna get a window down here. That's gonna give me some options. Uh, I can determine where the entry point of the cut is going to be. And I can do that by clicking this start button down here. So if I want specifically for the tool to start here, I can click that and that's where the tool is gonna to enter the cut. If I want it to lead into the cut, I can click the next one over and I can click there and I'll click from where I want it to lead in. And now it's gonna do my plunge right here and then it's gonna lead into the cut and complete that perimeter. So those are a couple of our entry strategies. We also have over here, we have a holding tab where we can set some tabs along the perimeter so that as it's cutting it, it will leave some material behind to make sure that piece doesn't float away when it wraps up that cut. So up here, we have all our cutting parameters specific to this cut. So that starts from the top, we have tool path depth. So if I leave this at ask later, it's gonna default at ask later. When I go to generate my code, I'm gonna receive a prompt that's going to ask me for the thickness of my material. And whatever I enter in there will be applied to all the cuts that are set to toolpath depth, ask later. However, if I wanna change that, if some of these are channels and they're not going all the way through, I need to specify the depth of those cuts. So if this was gonna be a channel, I could specify that cut at say four millimeters deep. And now it's not going to ask me for that depth later. It already knows it's four millimeters. And then any other cuts that I leave at the ask later, it will apply whatever value I enter into those. So that's pretty much just for doing pockets and channels and things of that nature. So the next box down is gonna be the machining order. So this I can use to designate a specific order of operations. I want it to complete my cuts in. It will default to automatic, which means that it will determine sort of what the best path is to conduct all these cuts. I find its logic a little bit goofy sometimes. If you were particular about it, you might set the machining order, in which case you, when you're in this window setting up the parameters for your part, you'd give this a numeric value so I might just go one, and the lower that value is, the higher the priority. So a one would mean that this gets milled first, and then I'll go through and I'll do a two and a three and a four, or I could have a group of one and a group of twos, whatever works, but that's where you'll set that. Below that, we have our holding tab length and holding tab height. As you remember, we put in those holding tab locations. We can specify the specific size of those, and those are the main boxes you're gonna need to pay attention to for now. So if I'm happy with this cut, I'm gonna move on. I'm just gonna close this. I'm gonna look at the next one, which is gonna be hole. So I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna pick one of my holes. I'll pick this guy. So now you can see it's generated a tool path offset to the inside of that DXF line as opposed to the outside. That is the fundamental difference between parts and holes. And I get the same sort of entry fields as we saw before. So I got my tool path depths and my machining order. I got the same sort of tabs down here where I can change the entry strategy for the part I also have some other buttons down here like pocket. So if I was drilling a hole here and I didn't wanna leave this little bit of material in the middle that it's not gonna to touch, I could click pocket and it's just gonna go and fill that in. It's gonna mill it all the way as it drills through. And then if I select that, I get some options for the pocketing strategy. 
We can see here, depending on the size of the pocket, there's some different tool paths it can run to complete that operation. But those are the basics of those two cutting strategies, your parts and your holes. I'm not gonna go into all these different tool paths today. I just wanted to get you up and running and playing around. This should get you started with some basic cuts. I will do more videos on exactly how to go about this. But before I do, I'm gonna show you another way to do this. It's a little bit easier. I'm gonna close this guy down. I'm going to remove my two existing parts there. And I'm gonna to go to this feature under automatic functions where I can create objects automatically. So it's gonna give me some entry parameters here where I can limit the size of part it's going to try and create. But basically it's going to go through and determine what's a part and what's a whole, and it's going to generate all those for you so you don't have to go through and automatically select everything. So I'm just gonna leave all this the same. I'm gonna go okay. And you can see it sort of figured it out. These are holes, these are parts and it saved me a bunch of time in trying to manually select those. You might have to go through and tweak some things, but other than that, should be good to go. That's sort of it for the overview on how to set this up, get parts in and start making your cut lines. I'm gonna show you one more thing, and that is how to turn this into code. So first things first, we can go to our preview here, and we're gonna get a simulation on what that process is gonna look like. So I'm gonna click that. And as you can see, as I had mentioned, if you designate ask later, it is now asking us what the thickness of our material is. So I'm gonna enter that. If I'm happy, I'm gonna go okay. And there we go. It's got all our tool paths figured out. It's got a rough time frame and all the individual operations. And then if I'm happy with that, I can click okay. And I can actually post this somewhere where I can use it. So I will go file, save CNC program. I'll click that and I will save it to my flash drive and I'll be good to go. So thanks again for watching. I will do more videos going more into depth on some of these features, but that should get you up and running.